So um, I have here a uh, smart um, car and I'm working on this project and um, I've already done some out of work but I wanted to include some notes at this point so I don't go too far into the project and then it doesn't make sense. So let me start by describing what the issue is at the moment. Um, the problem with this vehicle is uh, the starter motor. So when you crank the uh, uh, when you start the car and the starter motor tries to crank the engine, it doesn't actually crank properly. So um, maybe it will do half a crank or something like that and then try again and then eventually it just um, uh, becomes overheated and you can smell um, that is uh, the, um, the burning of the starter motor and uh, eventually it just stops cranking uh, completely. Now occasionally if the battery is on full charge, the engine does end up cranking. Now, um, what I want to do is I want to include notes on, just because you have the same system of uh, the car not being cranked properly, doesn't mean that it's the starter motor. Now, I have already gone through different diagnostics um, to uh, get to the point that this is uh, a starter motor issue. Basically, one of the issues that you could have is a flat battery, which is... Uh, just in front of the passenger side and this is a UK vehicle and it's um, under the carpet so you can check the battery if the battery is fully charged um, then uh, it's, it's possible that it's, it's something else uh, back here so that that's usually a common thing so the battery could be flat but that's not the case in here because the battery is brand new and I've also kept it on charge and uh, did make sure that the battery is okay. The other thing that could happen is the starter motor, which is sorry, the um, uh, the alternator, which is on this side of the engine, is quite a tight fit. It's actually a little bit further down. And uh, what that does is that let's say you were uh, driving, but and the battery is being used. However, the alternator didn't charge the battery. Uh, enough and uh, when you stop the car try to start the car again there wasn't enough power in the battery to crank the engine so that's the second thing that could be faulty and that's also not the case because when I've had this car started and I went on a uh, on a drive basically it does charge the the battery properly and um, it can it, as long as you don't turn the engine off uh, the car actually drives perfectly fine and uh, when I stop I check the voltage on the battery so all, all good so it's not the alternator in some cases um, the cranking issue is also down down to the fact that the alt the alternator has seized now that's not the case here because what I did was I checked when the engine was running to see if the um, the alternator pulley was uh, spinning and it was so it couldn't be a seized uh, alternator let me just see if I can pause this and get some light here okay so I've got a bit more light here um, but you can't, still can't really see much of the uh, the alternator on this side so it's actually uh, down here um, this is not the alternator that's the um, air conditioning uh, compressor so basically, so I ruled out that it's not the alternator and the battery is being charged. Next thing was, okay, so it's the starter motor that's causing the issue. And um, and that's exactly what it was. And it's also often called a lazy starter. And usually it's down to the fact that maybe the winding has uh, got a bit more resistance over the, year, over the years. Or maybe the bushes have... Um, worn out or maybe the bearings are seized and therefore there's not when there's full current available from the battery it ends up cranking the engine but when you're using um, a bit more electric uh, component electronic components in your car it can't crank and that's exactly what was the problem here because if I didn't use the stereo and the fan and I stopped the car, started again, eventually it will end up cranking and I could still hear they were struggling. So it is the starter motor in this case. And um, so basically that's what's led to this project. Now, um, what I found was, because it's the first time I'm working on a smart car um, uh, for the starter motor, I've done a couple of other things on this already, but starter motor is the... Um, it's, it's a main project for me. It's a major project for me, which I've never done before. I found out that the uh, starter motor is actually located um, where you s literally behind these pipes down there. And it's right next to the fuel tank. And you cannot uh, get access to it without 
doing um, a whole bunch of things and that's what I'm going to cover um, in this first video um, because um, I've got all these notes and hopefully they'll help you. So it's quite a tight fit and it's literally behind there. And the interesting thing is that the bolts for the starter motor are actually behind this. So all of this comes out and the two bolts, you take those out and the starter motor comes out from this side. But then you have another problem because the wires on the starter motor are actually on this side. So um, they, they connect uh, from this side and so you, you need some space to be able to actually get to them and you can't get to them from the bottom of the car either. Um, I've tried that and there's, there's, there's no way you can actually do that without uh, making space from the engine. So um, that's basically the location of the starter motor, just behind this this gap here. And it's quite a tight fit, um, as you can see. And if I point some light there, you can see this is uh, very, diffic very difficult to actually um, to be able to get in there and try to do the work. And as a matter of fact, you can't even see the starter motor. So we need some space. So the second thing uh, I learned is basically that I can take all these components off but and yes I'll have access to the two bolts but I'm not going to have access to the leads and that's where um, a whole bunch of other investigations started. So I haven't taken anything off here yet but I've taken a lot of the things at the bottom and I'll explain that uh, why I've done so. And so the idea is basically if the engine could somehow go down uh, so then you'll have enough room to be able to disconnect the wires and just wiggle the start uh, through all this uh, all these pipes um, of course we don't want to take out the air conditioning pipes and there are some pipes that we can take out or just move them out of the way and i'll record more notes on how i achieved that and you can just wiggle the starter motor through so you don't need to take the whole engine out but there is there are some drastic things that you have to do to even access that part of the car. So often I've uh, noticed that people have actually gone to the garages and they've been quoted uh, seven, eight hours of labor. And I think um, that's quite an honest um, uh, estimation because it is a long job, but it's not an impossible job and it's not overly difficult. You do need some special tools and uh, that's where I would say that it's important that you do this properly. So let me show you what I've actually done here. Um, so, um, let me close that. So basically what I've done here, and uh, let me show you at the back of the car. So the very first thing I've had to do is I've had to take the bumper off. And you can see the bumper is 